Okay, so this is a video to show you how to construct a 12 folded rosette. I've updated it and refined the method, hence the video. In terms of tiling it and doing something with it, that'll be in another video. Okay, so we'll begin with a horizontal line. Your uh, drawing is just for you to get to know the construction. It's not going to become something. So you can do it as big as your paper and your compass allows and um, you know your preference for that. So once you draw your initial circle, very carefully and precisely, you're going to draw a semicircle on the left and on the right. Now, if you've got a geometry set, leave this compass alone. And for the next maneuver, you can use another compass. If you don't have a geometry and just the one compass, you can probably, if you've got space above and below, do it with the same compass, depending on the size you chose, or just reduce it and then change it back in a second. So this distance that I've set the radius to is more than halfway of this distance as long as it is more than halfway they will cross and that cross will be vertically in line with the centre so this is a perpendicular bisector and you do one at the top and one at the bottom so this this and this align to give you your vertical oh not long enough let me get my big ruler Look at this. <laughs> it's a bit too heavy for me um, to do my drawings. As beautiful as it is, I prefer the uh, other ones. You didn't need to know that, did you? A point at the circle at north and at south. You're going to use those two points on the circle at north and south. I'm just going to check that my compass hasn't dramatically altered. And then you're going to draw a semicircle from the bottom and from the top. But also from the corners. Now, okay, so this drawing allows you to divide your circle into 24. Amazing. Right now, it's just divided into four. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide it into eight by using the diagonals. And then if you look at this inflated square, it's four corners, any one of them, taken to the center, and then out to its corresponding partner here. We'll divide this section into 12, and this section, and then we'll do the same here, dividing into 12. As long as they go to the edge of your circle, for this drawing, they're fine. Just, oh, it works. <laughs> That's great. Oh, see what I mean? It's so heavy. I have to use my full force. Oh, oh, kind of moved. Maybe I need to get bigger muscles. these four corners take any single one to the center find its corresponding partner adjust as needed draw the line now these four Okay, so our circle has now been divided into 24. And in the previous construction, I drew two hexagons and overlapped them to get the divisions in between. And um, I didn't need those hexagons for the drawing, I just needed it for the 24 uh, division. So I decided to use this construction instead as part of my update and refinement. Okay, next we're going to draw a dodecagon. 
So a doe deck again, starting at 12 o'clock, skipping each of these points, is a 12-sided shape. Doe meaning two, deck meaning ten, and a gon is the suffix for um, plain figure sided shape. So you just add whatever prefix, prefix, prefix you want. Like pent, agon, hex, agon. This should be tri agon, but we call it triangle, which is rubbish. So we've got our dodecagon. We're going to do a really important line now. So I want you to find this point. Visualize 90 degrees, okay, so a right angle, okay, and then go along the circle to the next division. This is a really important shortcut for creating rosettes that have certain proportions, and their proportions value we see twice once here and once later on when we extend it and tile it. So I'll talk about it now and I'll talk about it in the other video. I haven't made it yet, I imagine I will. Hope it's good. Okay, so when you do a uh, line like this, this is me doing it kind of full on maximum. What you could do is just do it where you need it. So where you actually need it is there. So one division in from the one side and one division in from this side. Is we're gonna add a circle. So this circle centered the same as before and you're just going to reduce it so that it hits that point and it hits that point and in my estimation it did yeah cool I'm getting to the fun part now we want to use 12 of these points but not the one that's you know 12 o'clock one o'clock it's the ones in between Point, so I'm not going, I'm going to put a cross beside it. Now, the way we're going to use this is we're going to draw our parallel sides by connecting each point to the one that's five away. Now, there are 12 points, and the notation for this is 12, and then if that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. And each point will have two lines um, from it. We're also going to stop the lines and not get our centre too crowded and then I'm going to introduce another little circle that will be a nice aid for finishing off the pattern. So when you do your first pair, start at the dough deck again and where you stop is, can you see the next division that has a circle? I'm stopping on that line and there and do the same on the other one. So if that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Starting at the dough deck again and then stopping on the next line that has a circle, the next division, sorry. Okay, so this is something that is hard to see. So once we do the cross, I'm gonna do something else. Have I mentioned it already? It's like I'm excited about it. And these two going across are a little bit easier because they just meet each other. So this rosette you can think of as four, sorry, three overlapping crosses. So the thing I do, which is like an addition, so this is like um, a tool, because when I've done this at workshops, when I start to do the other rosettes, it gets really confusing. So what we introduced, I say we, me, <laughs> I'm a teacher, um, is a little proportioning circle and it just keeps your centre a little bit balanced. Now, it's also a good way of checking what you've done already. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so then when I do the other ones, this circle is my no-go zone. I can't go inside of it. And therefore, it'll help me know where to stop and start. So, so I'm going to use this rule, 12, 5, and I'm going to work my way around um, clockwise. So starting at this point, 
Okay, so count one, two, three, four, five. Line it up. Start at the dodec again. Stop at your circle. Carry on the other side of the circle. Okay, and then I'm going to do this one. So I want to do the parallels at the same time. You don't have to. Uh, so call that um, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And they're parallel to each other. So if you just slide your ruler, a ruler along, you usually can uh, find the point. And what this does, it lets your centre have something to anchor to and keep correct. So this has two points leaving it. This only has one. So now we're going to do the pair going this way. Um, you can be systematic about it, but then you sometimes lose track. So having the 12.5 in the circle, sorry, 12.5, instruction on your circle kind of keeps you uh, anchored. I <laughs> don't know why I found that so funny. Um, okay, let's do this. Now this one. And I believe all the lines are there. So now I'm going to pick it out with a nice thick pen. So everything we need is drawn. So I'm going to pick out the two sides of the outer two sides of the petals. Okay, so all of them are done. And the lines, because we stopped and started them, we literally are drawing on top of all of those lines. So what is the value of this uh, construction? you know, what property does it have that makes it work or correct is this length and this length and this length and this length. So four out of the six sides of this petal are equal. So when you go on to tile it and make some stars in between or three pointed shapes, they will also end up being equal. There might be other rosettes where these two shapes are slightly different so this might be smaller and this might be bigger but then it loses this property of the the petals being a certain way so for me it's a really valuable one and then when you see what it relates to in other patterns it's even more elevated in its uh, cleverness okay let's color this baby in This is a good practice one, but in terms of tiling it and doing something with it in the way that Islamic geometric patterns often are, not as singular rosettes, that's coming soon.